Hello, everybody. It's that time again. You're listening to The Home Show here on News Talk 870 KRLA, the show that has something for everyone. Okay, we have got a great show for you today, and it doesn't matter what time you're listening. It could be in the afternoon, and it could be in the evening. However, we have attorney Barbara Hammers. She specializes in family law, and what a family law specialist is, I don't know. We have to ask her. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. Okay, now first of all, tell us what a family law specialist means. Well, the State Bar of California, who licenses uh, attorneys in the state of California, has uh, specialties that they offer different lawyers who have met particular criteria. They have practiced in their area for a number of years. They have handled cases in their field. For instance, with family law, it's you have been the first chair trial attorney for so many uh, trials. You have had so many uh, e- experiences with either trials or motion work for child custody, for property division, for contempts, for restraining orders, all of that. And then once you've met the criteria for the levels of experience that you need, there is a second dreaded bar exam that specialists have to take and pass. There is also a kind of a background check to to make sure that everything that you've put in your application is correct. And then you have uh, particular people who will write to the state bar on your behalf to vouch for you and your uh, ethics and your ability to practice. And there are, uh, there are several specializations, criminal law, estate and probate, appellate law, and family mm-hmm. law happens to be one of these specialties because it's such a complex area. And, now, I would like to make sure that we give you, the people out there a time when they can reach you and where they can get a hold of you. I'd like to give them two numbers. You have one in Santa Monica, which is 310-458-0796. And you also have a Newport Beach office, which is 949-631-2805. And tell us how they can get to you on your website. Well, uh, our website, uh, there's two ways you can get to us. Okay. You can put in barbarahammers.com uh-huh. or www.hammersbaltazar.com, which is the name of the law firm that I'm with. That is spelled H-A-M-M-E-R-S-B-A-L-T-A-Z-A-R.com. Or my name, BarbaraHammers.com, will also take you to my website. Okay. Now, Attorney uh, Hammers, I have a question for you. Sure. If I live with my (laughs) boyfriend, or let's say it's a girlfriend for seven years, uh, does California consider us married? You know, that's an interesting question because I hear that a lot. I don't know exactly where people get that idea, but California has not recognized common law marriage Uh, since the late 1800s. However, there's a little caveat. California will recognize a marriage that is valid in the place that it was consummated. Okay. So there are a couple of states in the United States that do recognize common law marriage. So Texas happens to be one of them. Now, Nola, you you actually uh, had a question, too. So, Nola, what questions do you have for her? It's about annulments, uh, if the possibility of it. it, Let's say I've been married for a year and it doesn't work out. Does California grant me an annulment, or what hoops do I have to jump through in order to gain an annulment? Well, an annulment, there is no time limit on the annulment. There are certain Mm. grounds for an annulment, and you can be married for 20 years and get an annulment. If you have the, the proper grounds, which it is one of them is fraud, one of them is oh, uh, you know, I see. somebody already married, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you didn't know, things like that. But it doesn't matter if you were married for a day or married for 20 years. If the grounds are there, you can get an annulment. Okay, now, if I keep my earnings, let's say my savings, my car, uh, retirement, uh, house, just in my little old name, mm-hmm. Uh, all alone while I am married, is it my separate property and uh, it won't have to be divided with my spouse in the event that we do get a divorce? In in California, it's a community property state. Mm. Anything acquired during the marriage, regardless of whose name it's in, 
with the exception of a few things, right. is community property. So keeping it in your own name alone isn't going to help you in the event of a divorce. Now, and, if, I, um, if I'm making more money, I have a better financial situation to provide for my children and there's a divorce, do the kids automatically come to me um, because, for custody? Um, number one, I, I often figure since I'm the mom, they're going to come to me. But if I'm making more money than my husband, is that an absolute natural to send them with me? It's really not. The courts look to what's in the best interest of the children, Mm -hmm. and they will not take into consideration the fact that one party has more financial ability than the other. That's kind of what spousal support and child support is for. Ah, got it. Now, if that guy, I'm going to say that guy because I don't want to be mean, (laughs) doesn't, my former spouse doesn't pay, let's say, the ordered child support, and I want to say, you don't have a right to see your kids. It, can that be held against them? Well, it's certainly not a good thing not to support your children, but sure. there's no there's no um, law that says that a person can't see their children because they're not paying support. Those two things are, are separate. Can the other spouse, though, say, even though if they're paying, say, you know, I just don't want you to see the kids because I just don't like you. Can that be possible? Well, it's possible if they'll say that, probably not a good thing to be saying. You mm-hmm. know, the court wants to make sure that both parents have a right to see their children and that children, more importantly, have a right to both parents. Mm-hmm. And uh, you have to always consider what, a, what kind of damage will be done to your children when they don't see the other parents. Is, yes. is there a specific age for a kid if they say uh, any specific age, the 13, 18, 15, 12, 10, where they can determine who they want to live with? The court will take into consideration a child's wishes to the extent that they are of sufficient age to be able to express an opinion about that. However, you know, if the 13-year-old says, I want to live with mom because mom lets me stay out till 2 in the morning and I don't have to do homework and I only have to go to school when I feel like it, <laughs> the court's probably not going to think that's in the best interest mm-hmm. of the child. So there, there's no bright line <laughs> rule about what age a child gets to say who they want to live with. But the court will entertain that, I mean, talk to the child about it, of course. Courts usually don't like to speak directly to children, but they have ways of having uh, other expert people that will talk to the children and then report to the court. Okay. Now, Attorney Hammers, if I owned my home prior to marriage, this is kind of, a, kind of a, like another question like I asked you before. If I owned my home prior to marrying my spouse and I refinanced it during our marriage, as long as I keep it in my name and my spouse assigns a quick deed claim, which I don't think a lot of people know what that is, my spouse will have no claim on it in the event that we later divorce. Well, a, a quit claim deed is something usually the, refi- the finance company will have one uh, spouse sign if it's only going to be held in one party's name. Mm. Although your house would be your separate property because you owned it prior to marriage. Oh. To the extent that the community, when you're married, you have a community. It's a partnership. Right. To the extent that they borrow money and they pay 